So, let's talk about health. Check out how much it snowed last night. Man, it was crazy. This morning was so bad. It was so bad. Yeah. I'm gonna go pick Landon up from his mom's and we're gonna go sleep at my mom's. So tomorrow he can just stay there and I'll have to drive with him in the morning because it was, th this morning was just so icy. It was little, I was scared on the highway. Check out my new screensavers. Like a vision board, I see with clarity. A hustle like my name is Gary. I gotta go pick up Landon real quick. Be right back. Hey, look who it is. He's here. That was quick, dude. How'd you get here? Who's that? I want to really, really talk about dog food and what the options are as far as what you can feed your dog like the, there's not just dog food that's not the only option and a lot of people have this misconception that dry food's better than wet food and that the only thing you can feed your dog is, is dog food which is just nonsense so I'm gonna break it down what foods are good what options you have if you do feed dry food what are the best dry foods I'll break down the top dry dog foods that I think that are the best for your dog. So if you do decide to feed your dog dry food, that you'll know what options are the best, in my opinion. And I'm not a vet. These are just this is just my opinions. I do know a lot about canine nutrition, um, but these are just my opinions. Just got done a job in Northeast Philly, headed back to the suburbs. Uh, got to drive pretty far through the whole city, past past like the art museum and all that. And then way out in the suburbs for this next job. So a little bit of driving, but whatever. This has been a super long, super long drive. But we're almost there. I hope. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. Do this session, and I got another an hour long drive back home. Awesome session with Lucy, went really well. Every time I see that dog, she's like 40 pounds heavier than she was last time, and not in a bad way. She's just a great Dane, she's really big. She's like, forget how many months old she is, but she's she's only like max eight, nine months, and she's 80 pounds. She's gonna be huge, she's such a big dog. Drive back home. Boop. Off we go. The horse carriage. I don't know if you can see it. This is just a, a horse carriage just in that dude's front yard. All the snow's like basically melted. Lucy's doing great with training, but she has some skin issues and it, it kind of sparks something that I really, really have been wanting to talk about. Um, and that's canine nutrition. So, uh, I just really want to go over real quick, like, number one, unfortunately, if your dog has allergies, I've never, well, let me just say this, vets have a very bad track record of fixing those problems. So, I've dealt with this personally, and I've had a lot of clients that have dealt with allergies, and my personal dog, so, 
when I got her, she had serious allergies. She's a brindle pit bull. She had very bad allergies. I fixed them. I did a total revamp of her entire system, which is what you have to do if they're really bad. And I fixed her allergies. And then I kind of got lax again. Her allergies came back. And I fixed them again using a different, well, a similar method, but a little bit. I tweaked it a little bit fixed them completely she was great she she had great skin she was perfect then they came back again I got I started my company I got lax again and now I'm doing a whole revamp again so that that's another reason why I kind of wanted to talk about this is I'm dealing with this as we speak like I'm doing a total revamp of Bella's system and trying to get her allergies fixed and I'm gonna keep them fixed I'm gonna you know stick with the plan and stay there I've tried to introduce um, different proteins, different foods, and she's just always going back to skin issues. So I have to just stick with what works, and that's it, period. So, what I want to talk about is not allergies. I'll do another video on allergies and how to fix allergies once we get Bella's skin worked out again for like the third time. Once they're worked out, I'm going to do an entire video on how to fix allergies. But, if your dog does has, have allergies, this stuff can definitely help you. But if your dog doesn't have allergies and you just want to make sure your dog's healthy and happy, and you want to feed your dog the best thing you possibly can, then that's what we're going to talk about. Dry dog food is not the best thing for your dog. It's not the most biologically appropriate thing to, for your dog to eat. That being said, I am going to go over the top dog foods. If you do want to feed your dog dry dog food because it is easy, you know, we have a lot of stuff going on. It's the easiest thing to feed, for sure. Origin. Origin's gonna be the number one best dry food. It's like top of the line, best food. You look at the ingredients, top five ingredients are gonna be whatever protein is in that food. Next on my list is Nature's Variety. Nature's Variety, I had that on it for a really long time. It's definitely a good food. It's what I used. It's the food when she was, so when we fixed her allergies, there were a few different types of foods that she was on. She was on, um, well, two different types, well, three different types. So she was on, first she was on just wet food, and we fixed it with just that. Then she was on, then she was on raw, um, and we fixed it with just that. Then she was on Nature's Variety dry food, and that fixed it. We also we also supplemented with enzymes. Bell Bell, did you tennis ball? Number three is what I've had Bella on since then is wellness. Wellness. It's like, again, top of the line dog food. Then number four is going to be Merrick. Merrick, again, I'll switch back and forth between wellness and Merrick. And then the only food that I've never had Bella on that I know is a great food is Natural Balance. Natural Balance is an excellent food. So you want the top three, preferably the top five, and at the very least, the top two ingredients to be meat. So, and when I say meat, I'm not talking about byproducts. You want them to be like it. Like, let's just use chicken as an example. So, if you're if you if you're doing chicken, you want the first few ingredients to be chicken, chicken meal, um, chicken hearts, and then like you can have whole chicken, organ meat. So, like liver, but you don't want byproducts. So meal is good, byproduct is not. If you're looking at a food and the first ingredient's meat, but the second one's not, automatically a no-go. So the top two ingredients have to be meat. Preferably the top five. Um, three is a is a good guideline to go by. Like if you if you got the first three ingredients or meat, then you're good. Like you can you can bet that that food is going to be quality. Um, after that, you want to make sure you have ingredients like fish oil, um, any flaxseed that's good, pumpkin. You want you want to look for like really good ingredients, like things that you know what you're looking at. 
at least read the first 10 ingredients and understand what they are so you know what you're feeding your dog.